Do you use the machine controller but want to use it inside of Ableton Live instead of the machine software? Good, then stick around because I'm going to show you the most common way that I use machine inside of Ableton Live. Coming up. Hey there YouTube, this is Ben from BeEmotion.Design and this is the first episode, 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 this is the first, this is the first, and this is the first episode in a series, in a series, or what I plan on being a series of uh, videos under the moniker of BE Music. You can see it right there, we are. there I'm kind of pointing to it. Now what's BE Music? So what is BE Music? BE Music, simply put, it's just the name that I've given the uh, label uh, that I will be releasing uh, my music under or selling my music under. So uh, I've been writing music for almost 40 years um, and it's basically the first, the very first creative endeavor that I ever embarked on. And um, up until now, it's primarily, with a few exceptions, primarily been a hobby. I've done some stuff professionally, but I've decided that 2019 is going to be the year that I'm gonna start uh, releasing a lot more music and doing a lot more music and trying to actually make money from music. Uh, whether it's scoring a film or recording with an artist, writing a song or just selling my beats or whatever it is. So that's all it is. Um, I'm not a big uh, you know label like Universal Music or Sony uh, or Warner Brothers uh, for that matter. But hey, if any of those guys, Clive Davis, Jimmy Iovine, uh, Dr. Dre, any of you guys wanna, you know, give me a call and, you know, hook me up, hey, I'll more than happy to listen. Anyway, so like I said, this is the first episode in what I hope to be a series of videos, whether it's machine, got this uh, great little synth over here that I hope to use as well too. There's also, uh, actually my machine controller is over there along with my Ableton push. Um, I've got a bunch of other toys and gadgets and stuff like that. So I'm hoping to create a lot more content uh, in the future. So please do me a solid, hit that subscribe button and hit that little dingling bell thing so that you can get notifications when new content is posted. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, let's get into the tutorial. I'm primarily an Ableton user and while I do have a push to uh, controller, I still like using the uh, machine controller when I'm programming beats inside of Ableton. And uh, so while every user is different, I know there are a lot of people who like to uh, separate out each pad out into its own track for mixing purposes. And that's not really what we're gonna be doing here in this particular video. But if it is something that you do want to know or learn about, definitely let me know in the comments below and I can make a video uh, showing you how to do that. So there are two ways that I go about using machine inside of Ableton. One of them is just using the simple plugin itself. And in this particular video, I'm gonna show you how, to, how I go about using it as a plugin. It should be common knowledge, but I'll say it anyway. Anytime you use machine inside of a DAW like Ableton or Logic or whatever your DAW of choice is, you're using it as a plugin instance. And while you still can utilize uh, the machine plugin, in a lot of the same ways that you can utilize the software, I don't really like doing that because then all of my MIDI, MIDI data is inside of that plugin and I want it inside of the actual DAW itself. So I, whenever I use it as a plugin instance, that's just it. I just use it as a plugin. I want the MIDI data in Ableton to trigger the sounds inside of uh, machine. So um, that's kind of primarily how I use it as a plugin. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So we're here inside of Ableton and I have a MIDI track. I'll go ahead and put the Machine 2 plugin on this track. Um, and uh, I can do that one of two ways. I can either do that the old fashioned way by going through the browser and choosing, um, and choosing either audio units or VSTs. And in this case, audio units, um, and you can scroll down to uh, Native Instruments and look for Machine 2 and then drag it over onto the MIDI track. But since I have a push to controller, uh, I will click undo here and then uh, I see I'm gonna go to the push to controller and I'm gonna hit add device. I'm gonna scroll down to my plugins folder and um, then I'm gonna go to audio units and um, let's see here, let's look for native instruments and scroll down to machine two and then hit the load button. Okay, once the plugin is loaded and it'll take a little bit for it to load, but once it's 
it's loaded, um, uh, I'm gonna go to my sh machine controller. Now, I'm using um, the machine studio controller in the studio, and in, in the beginning of this video you saw me, I, I have the Micro MK3 as well too, which I use for traveling. Um, and um, I'll actually probably make another video because the functionality of the, uh, the Micro is different than the studio. There are different buttons that you push and whatnot. So now that the plugin is loaded, I'll hit the Browse button. And in this case, I'll just select any kit and I'll hit load. It doesn't really matter uh, for this particular example. Uh, and so uh, I've loaded the kit and then now I'll hit the browse button again to exit out of the browse mode. Uh, and uh, now, and that's actually very important to do because uh, sometimes a lot of people don't really do that. They keep it in the browse mode and the, what happens is that you're hearing the, um, the, the pre-baked pattern or um, the uh, audio file that exists to kind of show off. Uh, what the kit sounds like. And so anytime you hit a drum pad, you're gonna be re-triggering that pattern again and it just gets all confusing. So hit the um, hit the browse button again to exit out of browsing. So now that the kit is loaded, there's still a couple of extra steps that you still have to uh, go through in order for Ableton to record the MIDI data. On the machine controller, hit the channel button and then go to group and then make sure input is selected. And on the MIDI routing, change that to manual and change the source to host and leave channel set to all. And if you take uh, your mouse and hover over the start knob in the plugin interface inside of, the, uh, inside of Ableton, uh, it'll change to reveal the bass note uh, that the pads are set to and make note of that, that's important. Now on the machine studio controller, hold down shift and hit the channel button again to turn the controller into MIDI mode and hit shift again and hit the templates button and then hit load and then hit shift again and hit the pages button. Your group buttons are now octave buttons. And earlier I said to make note of the root note that the pad starts on, it starts on C1. So uh, group A, the pad one of group A actually represents C minus one. Uh, pad one on group B is C zero and then pad one of group C is C plus one, which is uh, the first pad that we wanna be triggering. So we wanna make sure that we're in group C. And now when you hit the pads, uh, they'll uh, trigger all the right sounds and the pads will all be perfect. And so um, now we can just hit the record button on Ableton. And now when you play the pads, all your MIDI data is recorded inside of Ableton. So now what happens if you want to layer uh, machine drum kits? And that's actually something that a lot of producers do. I think I had a friend of mine tell me that um, uh, Max Martin, the big uh, pop producer who's uh, you know produced just about every pop hit that you've heard, uh, he can sometimes have 10 layers of a single kick drum. That's just the kick drum because he's trying to get the various different uh, transient information out of each sound and then combine it all together to make a unique sound. Um, and so sometimes that is why you would want to layer uh, drums. So, but what if you want to use um, multiple machine drum kits? Well, that's easy. Just duplicate the MIDI track. You've already set up all of the data. And so now when you duplicate uh, that particular MIDI track, all of the uh, information will uh, transfer over to the new uh, instance of that particular plugin, including all of the MIDI routing. So all of that stuff, it's all set up and it's all ready to go. So now you just hit the browse button on the machine controller, select whatever kit you want, hit load and you're ready to go. And uh, then ho hold the shift and hit the channel button to enter back into MIDI mode and then you just start recording. So um, one of the great things about Ableton, um, uh, now that you've set all of this up once, you can save it as a template and you never have to go through the process again. Simply drag the MIDI track into the user library um, and uh, name the file whatever you want to name it. And the next time you want uh, you want to use the machine plugin, just drag it from the user library into your session and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about it ever again. 
Since this video is already getting pretty lengthy, I'm gonna stop here and I'll do a part two where I'll go into the second method that I utilize when using machine inside of Ableton. And as a teaser, I'll just go ahead and tell you briefly, I use it as a drum rack. Um, and uh, so in the next video, I'll go through that step-by-step uh, -step process. So like I said at the beginning of this video, uh, this is the first episode in what I hope to be a plethora which means a lot uh, of episodes uh, and content uh, regarding music production, uh, detailing kind of my journey on how I'm going about this process of trying to make money uh, with my music. Uh, so your support means the world to me, so please definitely hit that subscribe button. You can hit that little bell icon uh, to get notified. Uh, also, you can follow me on Twitter, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm gonna be posting on those as well too. Um, and if you need information regarding uh, licensing of music, you can contact me through the website at bemusic.net. You can also contact me via Twitter and Instagram. I'll respond as well. And if you have any questions or if you have any content suggestions, if there are videos that you would like to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for coming to the channel and thank you so much for sticking around this long and watching me meander and stumble over my words. I very much appreciate it. And I really, really hope that you come back and watch more. Thanks again and bye for now. I keep, I'm looking at the monitor, mother and I'm wearing sunglasses for simply put, simply put because I keep looking at the monitor instead of looking at you, the camera. So this is a way for me to cheat and, uh, and make it look like I'm looking at the camera, but I'm actually looking at the monitor, which is right there, 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 there's the monitor.